I've been designing and launching client websites for over 15 years. At this point in my career, I've created hundreds and hundreds of websites. And while each one of those sites were their own precious, unique little snowflake, there are some tried and true practices and principles that are important for every single website that you're gonna launch for a client. The first thing that every website needs is a clear, compelling hero section. In the first three seconds, a user will decide whether to stay on that website or bounce and go somewhere else. The hero needs to do a few things. It needs to clarify what you do, define who the website is for, offer them what the next steps are, and hopefully, hopefully, offer something that's visually appealing. We live in an attention economy, so it's not a bad thing to add a little bit of pizzazz to your hero sections. I design all my websites in Framer now, so going over to the Framer gallery is a great opportunity to see some examples of great hero design, like this one from Ugly Cash. Immediately when I load this website, it tells me that your bank's not gonna do this, that this is a stable coin app. It tells me who it's for, why I'm here, what the next actions are to take to get the app, and look at this, I get a nice, fun drag interaction, there's your pizzazz. Play Zero is another great example of an awesome hero section. I get this clean, simple animation and it tells me fix, learn, prevent. It brings AI to a new era of software development beyond the code editor. And I have a really simple CTA to request a demo. Comet Browser's website, which is built in Framer by the way, is not filled with all sorts of animations and over the top interactions, but it is simple in its claim. It's a browser that works for you. I know exactly what's expected of me to click to download the Comet browser, and it's also aesthetically beautiful. I recently built a website for a development agency using Framer, and it has a real simple top hero section. It tells them that they are a boutique consultancy agency. You can chat or chart a course with them, contact them to get started. And I had this nice, simple loading animation, which is a little bit of branding, pizzazz style. So no matter what type of project you're working on or client you're building a website for, the hero must, I repeat, must be compelling and clear. The second thing that every website needs is a flexible content management system for dynamic content. Clients need to control their content, blogs, resources, pages, updates, but they shouldn't have to go into the code or into the design layouts to update that content. This is another one of those reasons why I use Framer because their CMS is so easy to implement and it allows you to do so much. It's super flexible. For the same website I was looking at, if I open up the content management system, you can see that I have CMS collections for case studies, for FAQs, for their team, for their resources, AKA their blog list. I even have CMS collections like topic tags that create relational connections. So when somebody is blogging, they can open up that blog and they can simply drop down to those topic tags and select where this blog belongs, what category it belongs in. A CMS should make your client's life easier, maintaining the website while keeping it governed so that it scales consistently. The third thing that every website needs is SEO and performance optimization because you can design the most beautiful website of all time, but if nobody can find it and it loads slow, then you haven't really accomplished anything. There's a bunch of basic things you can do to make sure that you have SEO and performance optimization. Like make sure you don't load up 10 megabyte images, giant videos, or use too many animations. Simplify your sites so they load quickly and the SEO is good. But Framer has just released as of this month, a dynamic optimization update that allows all of the sites, the moment that a user loads a page, that it caches things correctly, it gives consistent performance across all of your sites, and it just makes them a whole heck of a lot better. There's also some great tools that you can use inside of Framer. I really like the SEMflow plugin, so just open that up. It's gonna audit and analyze your site for SEO and performance and give you an audit. And then it creates a series of tasks for you that you need to make sure that you go in and work on. Like for this site that I'm almost ready to publish, I need to make sure that I update missing focus keywords, keywords in the titles. I'm missing an H1 for some reason, gotta fix that. So leverage the basics, but also leverage platforms like Framer and tools like SEMflow that will help you in this process to make sure that your websites are performant and SEO optimized. Next up, implement a smart use of AI to build websites faster and scale websites faster. Efficiency wins clients. That's it. There's nothing else to say about it. I recently launched this website for a client called Vinyl. They're an AI note-taking and assistant application for the accounting and bookkeeping space. And on their pricing page, they needed a really dynamic, complex currency and price calculator. So the user can change the currency, update the amount of team members and meetings.
meetings they expect. This would have taken me a really long time to code this by hand or use other tools, but instead in Framer, I was able to go in and use their workshop, their AI workshop feature to basically prompt this tool into existence. And it created a custom code component that I could demo and try out and I could edit that code if I wanted to manually, but it did hours and hours and hours of work for me to satisfy the client's needs. So whether you're using Framer's tools like Workshop or their Wireframer tool to generate layouts fast, find the tools that work for you to scale and build websites faster using AI technology. The last thing that every client website project needs is collaboration and client editing capabilities. Because a smooth handoff of that website means client autonomy. It means less friction for the client and more ownership for them. Give them the keys to the website. Let them drive the car. I don't want to have to keep driving and maintaining it for them. For instance, I'm building this website for a client right now. And what's great is when I open it up in the browser, you can see there's lots of content and all the user has to do is actually click edit content here in the browser and Framer is going to allow them to go in and update titles however they want, come down and find body copy, even grab things like images and update those images really, really easily. This allows the client to own it from here on out. It's not mine, it's theirs. And that handoff process makes them very, very happy. When you mix on page editing in the browser, like what Framer offers you, as well as dynamic, powerful CMSs, the client feels like they can manage it. It's not overwhelming. You have built the guardrails and the systems and structure for them to love their site, to own their site, and to scale their site with success. You want to talk about getting testimonials and referrals, set them up for success, and they'll set you up for success. To sum everything up, you can build the most beautiful website the world has ever seen. But if you don't think about these core things that every website needs, you're not going to get more business. You're not going to get more referrals. You're not going to grow your web design business. So while you're growing your skills and creating awesome things, don't forget about the basics that are needed for success. But what are your thoughts? Did I miss anything? Are there other core things that every website needs? Let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you know when more web design content comes out. And with that being said, we will see you in the next video, Design Champs.